Hi, my name is Archana Kumar. I am the lab coordinator at Trucking Matters Community College. We are currently collaborating with Learner to develop ANP and Biology Lab. In today's demo, I will be showing you a few lab experiments to provide an understanding of these approaches used to deliver a virtual lab experience. Please refer to other Learner video to get a basic understanding on the Learner platform. Let's dive right in. Once you log into Learner, you'll be brought onto your main platform, which consists of your courses. I'm gonna go ahead and select Biology Lab for today's demo. Once you click on your desired course, you'll be brought into this main component page. And this main component page consists of Learn practice quizzes, assignments, gradebook, flashcards, activities, MyBank, 3D bodies, and simulation. I'm going to go ahead and click on simulation. Once you click on simulation, you'll get a variety of simulation. Each of the experiments uses different scenarios and values to ensure that no two students get the same exact experiment. A few of the simulations that we offer are Benedict's, iodine, blood grouping, white blood cells, photosynthesis, gram staining, Burette's test, mitosis, meiosis, Mendelian genetics, blood pressure, and even respiratory volumes and capacity. So let's go ahead and take a sneak peek into some of these simulations. I'm going to go ahead and click Iden test. So I'm going to click on start experiment. Once I click on start experiment, I'll be brought into a brief synopsis of what the iodine test is detecting for. And in this case, the iodine test is used to detect for starch. I'm going to go ahead and click on start experiment. Once you click on start experiment, you'll be brought into this main page, which consists of our QE agents, materials, and apparatus that are used. The goal of each of these experiments on Learner is to make the student understand key concept and help students get into the discipline of following exact procedure. As you know, this is very crucial for a lot of our experiments. Making the virtual experience with virtual reality of augmented reality doesn't make the student acquire the skill in the real world. Hence, the approach used here is more about process and less about realistic virtual experiences. A decent video of conducting the real experiment in the lab, along with the virtual lab, serves better purpose to help students learn. So here we have some QE agents that are used in this experiment, start solution, amylase solution, and iodine. I can go ahead and click on each of these solutions to get a broad sense of what the solution contains. Same thing with amylase, our iodine, and then below that we have our materials and apparatus such as flask, test tube, watch glasses, pipette, and glass rods. I'm going to go ahead and click on next step, step procedure. Once I click on next step procedure, I will be brought onto this page that consists of five different test tubes. Keep in mind, as mentioned before, the test tubes here are randomly picked from a list of eight scenarios with multiple storyboards per scenario. This ensures that values and outcomes for each of the test tubes are different. On the top of the screen, we have instructions, and the first instruction adds solution into the test tubes based on the table below. If you look towards the bottom of our table, we have different solutions, starch solution, amylase solution, and then we have our distilled water. We are given instructions and based on these instructions, we will fill up these test tubes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with start solution. On the left side of the screen, we have our materials and apparatus, and I'm going to go ahead and click on start solution. The first test tube requires five ml of solution. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on five ml and click once. Test tube two does not require any start solution. However, test tube three requires four. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on one ml and click Test tube three, four times. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna do the same here, but in this case it only requires one ml, and test tube five only requires one ml. So I'm gonna continue the process, but now I'm gonna add amylase, and I'm gonna follow the instructions based on the requirements of the solution.
For some of these solutions, you may encounter a 9 ml or 8 ml or 7 ml. So in this case, the student will go ahead and click on 5 ml, tap once on each of these test tubes, and then go ahead and click on 1 ml, and then they would click on four times. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That would result in 9 ml. And here I would click on 1, 2, 3 and that will result in 8 ml because I previously put a 5 ml into this test tube. So I'm going to go ahead and click on validate and validation is successful. We can then continue on to the next step which is incubation. For this step on the top of the screen in, we are asked to incubate the test tubes based on the table below. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the incubator water bath on the left side of the screen and I'm going to follow the temperature and time for each of the test tube. So for the test tube, we require 37 Celsius with a 35 minute incubation. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on add incubator. I'm gonna to continue to do this for the rest of the test tubes. If a student accidentally types in the incorrect values in this incubator, so for example, for test tube four, we have 37 Celsius and 30 minutes, but if I accidentally put in 25 minutes, the student will be aware that they made a mistake. And so I'm going to just continue from here and then we can take a peek into what that would look like. So I'm going to go ahead and click on validate. And now test tube four indicates that there is improper incubation instructions. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and correct that on the left side of the screen. And then I'm going to we click incubator and we click validate and we are all set to go validation is successful and we're ready for incubation incubation is done i'm going to add the iodine on the top of the screen it indicates add three drops of iodine solution into each test tube i'm going to click on iodine solution and i'm going to add three drops into each of these test tubes And I'm going to click on validate. Once validation is successful, I can go ahead and click on result and observation. And here we'll get a, a few questions relating to the test tubes. The first question, identify the color change in each test tube. So the student would go ahead and select their desired color for each of these test tubes. And I'm just going to randomly go ahead and do this. And then I would click on submit answers. If the student is incorrect, there will be an X mark next to their answer and then the correct answer will appear on the left side. I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Here students will be asked to select the correct reason behind the color change for each of these test tubes and students would scroll to the left side of the screen and look at the different observation and options we have for each and we can go ahead and select the appropriate options for each of these test tubes. And then once the student complete that, I would go ahead and click Submit Answer. The great thing here is we actually get an opportunity to see the correct answer. So students would be able to look on the left side of the screen and see these different observational and what matches to the correct test tubes. Next, we can click on Finish. So that was an overview of iodine's test. We can also go through some of the other scenarios, such as uh, my meiosis or mitosis. So let's just take a quick peek into mitosis. When we take a quick peek into mitosis, we'll get a brief synopsis similar to the previous simulation. And then we can start the experiments. We will get our preparation, which is again similar to the first simulation that we did in the iodines test. And then students can go ahead and click on these solutions. After they are done, they'll be provided with instructions and then they will be provided with questions and observation that they would be required to answer. Some of the other ones that we also offer is meiosis. So a student can click on start experiment. They're given a brief overview of what meiosis is and the different stages of meiosis, meiosis one and meiosis two. I'm going to go ahead and click on start experiment 
And here we have some preparation and some materials and apparatus. Instructions, including an image of what these phases looks like. Observation, and we get into a little bit of a histological image similar to what we did in mitosis. And then students would be asked to drag and drop the correct phases based on this histological image. The great thing about having histological images in these activities is that we currently learn online and this gives students an opportunity to visualize this virtually, especially since we can't bring our students into the classroom. So this is a great opportunity for students to visualize what it may look like underneath the microscope. So they would go ahead and correct it this by matching up the correct answers to each of these phases. So this is an example of our mitosis simulation. We also have photosynthesis and we go a little bit into the photosynthesis process and what that entails. And then the student can go ahead and click on start experiment and we have a little bit of synopsis of the preparation involved and the materials we will be using. And then an instruction in here we have a little bit of a video for students to watch so they can get a better sense of idea of photosynthesis. And then here are our activities relating to photosynthesis. So students can select the light source as indicated on the beakers. So I can just go ahead and give you a little bit of a overview on this. So we would just drag and drop similar to the concepts of mitosis and meiosis and the iodines test. And then students would click on validate. So these are just some of the simulations that Learner offers. And we have gram staining as well. We have blood pressure. We have respiratory. So there is a variety of simulations here. It gives students multiple options to experience the biology lab in a virtual setting. Thank you very much for your time.